through influencers' feeds and like listening to their stories, and I was just like on the other side of the couch, and I was listening to these people, and they were saying the weirdest things I've ever heard. The third, the first one I think I heard was this lady, like so beside herself. I cash you guys. My kombucha took three days to prime, not two. It's like my 9-11 all over again. And I was like, is this SNL? Like, what is it? Is this a bit? Turn your chairs this way. You guys, you're gonna get Taco Mix syndrome. Turn your chairs. Um, and, and so I was like, wait, what are you listening to? And she's like, oh, it's Instagram stories. And I'm like, what? Okay, show me some more of these. So you scroll through, all these people have like a million followers in their stories. And just the, it was the craziest things what they were talking about. In my mind, I was like, what? Is this real? Right? Hey, guys, you just need to love yourself and be comfortable in your own skin. Anyways, I'm heading up to Spa Trubé to get my eyeballs bleached. And I'm like, what? So, what I've done my entire life to get through any problem I've ever had is I just make fun of it. That's how I've done everything. So I'm like, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm, Liz is like, why don't you make fun of this? She's like, here. She's like, put on some glasses. So I went and bought like 20 pairs of glasses. They were as big, as big and just hideous as I could find. And I would just film myself for Instagram stories all day long, just being ridiculous. And I tried to be as over the top as I possibly could. So if people on Instagram were talking about like, I haven't washed my hair in three weeks because my hair is like not oily. And I would do something like, I haven't wiped my butt in two months. No skin marks, right? And so, and so this, long story short, people loved it. And people messaged me from day one saying, this is the funniest thing. Please keep doing this. Keep making fun of this. I'm so sick of seeing these people like, on Instagram, like, talking about, oh my gosh, guys, my husband hates me. We've only been to Hawaii twice this week. And it's like, you should be like a motivational speaker in Syria. Like, just lead with that story. Don't you guys hate it when it's only been to Hawaii twice? Like, where's everyone going? Um, so, this whole thing got bigger and bigger. It was a lot of fun. I tried to incorporate new stuff to show how fake social media is. I came up with a brand, a fake word. And to show how shallow we are. I even paid $1,200 to get it trademarked for no reason other than to say it's trademarked and I trademarked a fake word and then I made shirts and hats and I sold them for astronomically high prices. Like a t-shirt was like, a tax was like 38 bucks and people bought it because we're idiots. Because if an influencer says you need this swipe up, you're like, I need it for some reason, right? My husband just got me this $5,000 Chanel purse because he totes loves me. It's like, no, he didn't. Chanel gave it to you for free, right? But then what happens is that people look at their husband like, you've got me socks. Like, I hate you, right? Where am I going with this? Let's try and figure this out. So over the months, I got a lot of followers and got really big. It was a lot of fun. And I was, gonna get, I was literally going to kill the character off after a while. I was like, okay, here's what's going to happen. She's going to get super, super depressed. Her husband's gonna finally realize how ridiculous this is. He's gonna leave her, she's gonna join the circus, and she's gonna like fall off the face of the other side. But I had a lot of fun because with the followers, was anyone following me at all? And went, oh yeah. I was like, hey, let's have some fun. Hurricane Harvey hit. And the next day, some influencers, I won't say who they are, were on Instagram saying, oh my gosh, you guys, Hurricane Harvey's flooding all of Houston, but thank goodness I'm toast dry in my hunter boots. Swipe up for a coupon code. I'm like, what? Like, people are literally losing their lives and we're like schlepping products on them and exploiting tragedy. So that got me mad. I started a fundraiser. I'm like, I'm going to auction off, what was it, a hat or a koozie? Let's try and raise 500 bucks. I'm going to give it to the Harvey victims. We raised $130,000. Hundred and thirty. Thank you. Hundred and thirty. Geez. I thought low P kids wouldn't clap at that, but AF kids should. Like, Hundred and thirty. That's my allowance. And then my wife and I hopped on a plane. We went down there and we found families who lost everything, and we just handed them cash. Five grand, ten grand, seven grand. We filmed it, we put it on Instagram, and people watched it and they kept donating to the cause. It was a great thing because they could see their money real time make a real impact. And people were like, I've donated nine times to this. I have eight cents in my Venmo, just take it. And I just like watch it. Because when I give, like, I, I give money and then I'm 
feels good because I see it real time. Like, it's like this charitable heroin is what I call it. I've never done heroin, but charitable heroin is really good. We did a big cancer carnival. I don't know if anyone came, but for three cancer kids, we raised thirty thousand dollars for that. It was a lot of fun. And my whole goal is just to use social media to show the world that if you have a big following, you don't have to do what everyone else does and become this fake persona of like just selling product on people all day. I actually had a product I was going to invent and then make a fake email and, and then go to influencers and say, "Hey, I'm going to pay you to slap this product. It's really good. It's a pre-workout. You're going to love it." And in the ingredients, it was going to say cyanide which is poison, <laughs> and I was going to pay them to schlep it and then prove the point that, you know, for money we'll do anything, right? So, this all came to a crazy halt about a month ago. A month ago, I was at the gas station, getting my nooch, as I do. By the way, I never drink soda before the character. Now I'm addicted. <laughs> so, I go to the gas station to get a drink, and I run into a lady that my wife worked with like 10 years ago, old, kind of older lady, who was like the coolest older lady. Like, she was like that mom you wish you had. Super funny, super bubbly. And when I bumped into her, I'm like, hey, what's up? And she's just like, oh, hey. And I was like, oh, something's wrong. I'm like, hey, how's the family? What's going on? And she's like, oh. Like, her eyes were just dark and she just looked like miserable and she goes, oh, I don't know if you know this, uh, but my doctor, do you remember Whitney? And I'm like, yeah, Whitney, we used to take, when she was 10, we take her, go get ice cream and we go like buy, we go take them all before we had kids and like hang out. How's she doing? Oh, she's dead. What? How, wait, is she like 20, 22? What happened? She took her life pretty much. And I said, oh, where did this all start? And she said, well, it all happened when she was 14, 15. Anyone 14, 15 here? Loud and proud, one. <laughs> like 15 and a third. She said, well, it all started. It all started kind of with social media. She would just sit there and just scroll through her feed. She didn't know what it was, on Instagram or Twitter, whatever it was, Facebook. Let's just scroll through and just see people who are beautiful, just always on vacation, just, you know, skinny and tan and lovely and, like, had the perfect life. And, you know, I just looked at that all day, and it just made her feel like, what's, wait, my life's not like this. What's wrong with me? Why do I not have this? And what's hard with social media is when you see an ad in a magazine, you say, that's Giselle, like, it's Giselle, like, I'm not Giselle, I'll never be Giselle, it's an ad, I get, this is ridiculous, she's posing with, like, a pet zebra, like, come on, it's fake, right? But when you see people on social media, you're like, that's my neighbor, this girl goes to my school, like, I can, I should be that, right? And her self-esteem tanked, and she got super depressed, and to combat the pain, she started using a razor blade and cutting herself. And it got worse and worse. And her mom's like, I didn't know what to do. And it led to decisions which ended her life at 22. And she was just the most wonderful, vibrant person ever met. So what I did is I go on Instagram and I share that story. I said, guys, you'll never guess what just happened. Ran into a friend, blah, blah, blah. The story was she felt feelings of inadequacy, feelings of comparison, feelings of negativity, uh, feelings of lack of self-worth. And it all started from this stupid social media. And instantly, I got bombarded, like hundreds and hundreds of messages from kids, from moms, from sisters, from school teachers, from cheer coaches, from therapists, from 911 dispatchers, from ER docs, from everyone saying, oh my gosh, that, that's my, that happened to my sister, that happened to my wife, that happened to me. Like, I'm going through this. And researchers would reach out to me, like, you've got to keep talking about this. And I'm getting slammed on the other side from the content producers, like, your people are on following us because of this. Like, we're going to sue you. You're a bully. And I'm like, I'm just sharing stories. Oh. Don't shoot the messenger. But I loved it because I love controversy. <laughs> And people all over the country are reaching out to me like, please talk about this, please keep talking, please keep talking. And people, should, I'm sharing stories, I'm just sharing stories. My neighbor kid, we walked around the house two months ago and she was 14 and she was hanging from a tree. 
Where is this? We hide. Therapist reached out to me. Do you know that a third of the kids I see between age 12 and 18, a third at least, are on antidepressants or anti anxiety pills? A third? We live in Utah where our lives are so perfect and everything we see is so perfect. Why are we so freaking depressed then, right? It all comes back to this little thief. Every single day when you open your phone and you go to social media, you start scrolling through these feeds and you start comparing yourself to this highlight reel of total perfection. All you see on social media is perfection. Does anyone ever go on there and be like, oh my gosh, look at this zit. I just totally flunked my ACTs and David left me. Anyways, like no one does that, right? It's just like, look how pretty I am. I just had quadruplets, look at my six tag, right? <laughs> this little thief every day comes and knocks on your door. And you're like, hey, what's up? And he's like, hey. He's got his mask on, he's like, is it cool if I just like take everything that makes you happy? Yeah, yeah, that's fine, go ahead, it's right there. And then he comes back, the next time you open your phone and scroll through social media, he's like, hey, it's me again, I see you like repurchase all this stuff. Can I have it again? And you're like, sure, take it. I just want to be miserable. And this is one of the quotes that I shared over and over and over again by Teddy Roosevelt. But like I do with everything, I, I, I fake stuff out, so I changed it, and I was like, oh my gosh, you're a genius. I, he said, comparison is the thief of joy. And I said, comparison is the shoplifter of happiness. And it was like, you're a genius. I'm like, I'm just quoting this guy. <laughs> Comparison is the thief of your joy, right? When you compare, when you scroll through and you see perfect, 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 and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not that. You are literally letting a thief in your house and saying, take everything that makes me happy, right? And this is a slippery slope. When you let that happen, when you let yourself compare to someone's highlight reel, guess what? When you do that, you cannot win. You'll never win. You can't win against a perfect highlight reel ever. So whatever happened to just being authentic and just being okay, just being real, right? Anyone ever read Brene Brown? Anyone know who Brene Brown is? Brene Brown said, authenticity is the daily action of accepting who you are and letting go of who you think you're supposed to be. Are you on social media thinking about who you should be or who you're, you know, I, I don't like who I am. I need to be more like these people. They have it all figured out. They get free stuff. Every day there's boxes of stuff on their doorstep. Like, I don't have time to get to all this. It's like, who's sending it to me? $12 of free makeup again. Oh my gosh. And they try and open it with one hand as they're filming. And it's like really awkward. It's like, mm, uh, um, swoon. So I shared this message that got bigger and bigger. And one thing that was really relevant is people from Utah, which is us. They said, you know what? Everywhere we go, there's messaging saying, you are not good enough. Whether it be on your phone, whether it be around school, whether it be when you drive around. And the one thing I always hated driving, because I go to the airport, I travel a lot for work. And when I go down I-15, I see these billboards everywhere, and they're all everywhere, and they say what? You don't like your fat? Just freeze it, right? How about some Botox? You're too fat. Buy a new house. Like all these, like, you know, no offense to those companies, but they're all these ads telling you, like, if you don't like how you look, just like cut it up and like chop it and be like, sorry, God, you messed up. Like, I'm going to fix it. Right? <laughs> so I said, you know what? I want to put a billboard right on my 15 that is different. I just wanted to say, big bright letters, you are beautiful just the way you are, or something like that. So I said, hey, we need to raise three grand to get this billboard. Then we'll make five bucks until we get to three grand. I don't know how long it's gonna take. As soon as we get to three grand, we're gonna get a billboard. And I said, go. And we raised three grand in eight minutes and 40 seconds. Yeah. And I was sharing it. And I'm like, we just hit it in nine minutes. Do you guys wanna keep going? And everyone's like, yeah, it's more. And a couple hours later, we were like nine grand, and we're like, we have enough for a lot of billboards. And I said, okay, it was already nice. I'm like, when we wake up, this is it. Like, when I wake up, we'll stop. I woke up, we were 15,000 bucks. Called my buddy, I said, how soon can we get these up? He's like, I'll send you a creative today, we'll get them up. It was Friday, he's like, we'll get them up by Monday. 
And so for the entire month of February, when he drove through I-15, all the way from the north point of almost the Idaho border, all the way to St. George, these big, bright billboards, you saw them, the digital ones, that just said, you are beautiful, you are loved. Just to change the narrative that you women especially see every day that you are not good enough. I wanted to put that in the saying, you know what, you are good enough. And stop comparing to people's highlight reels because you'll never win. It's okay to be who you are. The only person, I'm sorry, what's this bell been ringing? 53? Four minutes? Okay, good. The only person you should ever compare yourself to, there's one person, is the person who you want to become. The best version of yourself. That is all you need to compare yourself to. Who do I want to be? What's the best version of me? How do I get there? I need a volunteer. You, you're a caller. Come up here. Give a round of applause. Oh, wait, I already gave you a dollar, right? Sit back down. You, come on up here. Sorry. I can't give you all the money. Tell us your name. I'm Chloe. Chloe. Caller. Big caller. Yeah, followers. I think you're awesome. And I love your shirt, and I love your hair, and you're such a nice person. Here's 20 bucks. Go sit down. All right, I need another volunteer. You, come on up. Give her an applause. Come on up. Come on up here. What's your name? Callie. And what are you sucking on there? Jolly Rancher. No. <laughs> Eating a pretzel. Eating a pretzel. I love pretzels. Callie. I want to give you 20 bucks, too. Is that okay? Okay. But first, I hate your shoes and your shirt and that dang pretzel you're eating. It's full of carbs and it's gross. And everything about you I can't stand and I just met you. I was going to spit on it, but that would be gross. <laughs> Show the audience. How much is that worth? $20. No, it's not. I just destroyed it. I ripped. I almost ripped. I crumbled it. I yelled at it. I screamed at it. I told it it is worthless. How much is it worth? $20. Are you sure? It doesn't change, right? Give a round of applause. That's a really expensive analogy. Especially <laughs> when I do this all the time now. Her $20 bill, perfect, crisp, beautiful. It's worth 20 bucks. Your $20 bill. Crumpled up, smashed, punched, pounded, kicked. And it doesn't change the value, does it? take that one, you take that one to the store, and you hand it to the person, and guess what? It's worth the same, because your value and your worth is inherent, okay? No one, no number, no follower count, no like, no swipe, none of that. Nothing matters. Your value is already there, but that number had a zero, had one. Your value has endless zeros, endless. You wanna know the secret of happiness right now? Take your phone, throw it out the window. Take your phone, do this. Because I had everyone do this, and everyone just messed me like, I feel so much better, I'm so much happier. This is the greatest. Take your phone, open your accounts you follow, go to every single one, whatever it is. Open that account, one you follow, one by one, and say, does this account make me happy? If it doesn't, take your finger and go, click, unfollow. Do that with every account you follow. Does this person make me happy? Uh, no, click, bye. Does this make me happy? Yeah, I love this. Next one. Do that to every account and you will have a life-changing experience. You will open your phone, you scroll through these feeds that used to make you depressed and compare and all these sadness and all this terrible stuff. You will now be inspired. You will feel a weight off your back and you will remember that your value is in here. The end. Uh, Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Neil.
Please love yourself. I love that saying because everyone says love yourself, but it's like, how do I do it? Just go love yourself, right? Realize your value is already here, okay? Go, what are you guys, the Dons? What are you guys, the Caveman? Go Caveman! 